Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and in this mini lesson, we're going to talk about multiplication rules um, for multiplying integers and decimals, positive and negative numbers, basically. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I want to give you a quick analogy here for um, a way to remember rules for multiplying. Think about a person um, being either a robber or a hero, and your house the robber or hero can do one of two things. They can either come to your house, which is like adding, like a positive, a plus, or they can leave your house, which is like a minus, like they're one less person in your house, and the result in the end. So when we think about this, a robber who the person would be considered negative, right, the, the kind of bad guy you don't want in your house, then bad guy leaving is a negative and a negative, and the result is good, right? You want that to happen. You want the robber to leave your house. If a robber moves into your house, that would be a negative and a positive. Moving in being in, like adding more to it, that would be a negative overall. A hero or a good guy leaving your house is not good. And a hero moving into your house would be a good thing. So you can kind of see that these rules, um, although you think about a negative and a negative being a positive. When you think about it in terms of a robber leaving your house, it makes sense. So just think about that as we move into the rules for multiplying because I think you'll find there are some parallels here. So the rules for multiplying, if it's the same sign, it's going to be a positive result. In other words, if it's a positive times a positive, or a good guy coming, it's a good thing. If it's a bad guy leaving, or a negative times a negative, 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 is a good thing as well, will be a positive result. When there's different signs, it's a negative. So a negative times a positive, or a negative person adding to your house, coming to your house, is a negative. Or positive times a negative, a good person leaving, would be considered a negative as well. All right, if that's a way that helps you remember, great. If not, you can forget about the whole uh, robber and hero moving and leaving your house, and just remember these rules. These rules will help. Let me show you a couple examples. If you have the negative 5 times positive 4, negative times positive, the signs are different, you're going to have a negative result. Let me show you three more examples. A negative times a negative gives you a positive. That will always be the case. Positive times a positive will give you a positive. And in our final example, a positive times a negative gives you a negative answer. And you can kind of see this happening. If the signs are different, you have a negative and a positive, or positive and negative, your result's going to be negative. If the signs are the same, negative, negative, or positive, positive, you get a positive result. So let's practice a little bit. I want you to try this one out. Try solving this question, negative 20 times positive 3. Remember to check your sign and make sure that it's correct. Did you get negative 60? If so, great job. Again, a negative times a positive gives you a negative result. 20 times 3 is 60. So it's the same exact rules with decimals. If you have something like this, negative 5.3 times negative 1.9, you would get a positive 10.07. So the rules are exactly the same with decimals. Negative times a negative gives you a positive. Same rules as everything we had before. So why don't you try a decimal out? Go ahead and multiply that 0 0.6 times negative 2.1. See what you get for a result there. Did you get negative 1.26? Negative 1.26. If you got negative 1.26, that is the correct answer. Negative 1.26 is exactly the answer to that. Now, let's take a look at... Um, what happens when we get slightly larger numbers? When you get bigger numbers or more numbers together, like this, 3 times negative 2 times 2 times 5 times negative 1, you are going to follow exactly the same rules that you had before. So you're going to start out with the first two numbers, 3 times negative 2. Positive times a negative gives you a negative. So 3 times 2 is 6, positive times negative gives you a negative, negative 6. Now let's move on to the next one. Negative times a positive gives you a negative, and 6 times 2 is 12. 
Now our next one, 12 times 5. 12 times 5 is 60. Negative times positive gives you a negative. And our last step, negative 60 times positive 1 gives, or times negative 1 gives you, negative times a negative gives you a positive. So that's the steps that you would follow when you're trying to multiply positive and negative numbers. You can see that it's a repetitive process. Over and over, remembering negative times positive, positive and negative, all the different rules. But there is a shortcut that I want to show you real quick. Instead of doing that with the rule every single time, instead you could just count the number of negatives. In this case, 1, 2. There are two negative numbers. It doesn't matter what the numbers are, how big they are, even odd, doesn't matter. You count the number of negatives. So in this case, there's two. There's negative 2 and negative 1. Right there and there. If it's an odd number of negatives, the result is going to be negative. If it is an even number of negatives, like in this case, 2 is an even number, the result will end up being positive. And if you think about that, it makes sense. A negative times a negative gives you a positive. So when they're in groups of two, they kind of cancel each other out. They become positive, I should say. All right, so if there's two of them, they become positive. If there's four of them, they become positive. If there's six of them, they become positive. So that's a good way to think about it. Um, if the even numbered negatives, the result is positive. So you can if, know what the final sign is and then just ignore the signs, just multiply like normal. So go ahead and try that out. I'll leave those steps over there on the side and give you a problem that you can work on. Negative 2 times 4 times negative 7 times 9 times negative 3. Let's try it out. Count the number of negatives. 1, 2, 3. There are three negatives, so I know my final answer is going to be negative. It's an odd number of negatives. So, instead of working with all the rules, I'm just going to put the negative on the outside, and I'm just going to multiply, ignoring the signs. 2 times 4 times 7 times 9 times 3. Wow, that's a really big number. It gives me 1,512, and I know it's going to be negative. So I don't have to do every step along the way, changing the sign back and forth. I can know what the sign's going to be, multiply like normal. If that's a helpful shortcut, use it. If you prefer to work it out step by step, work it out step by step. Totally up to you. All right, let's move on to our quick review. Just like a negative person or a positive person coming and leaving your home, the rules for multiplying positive and negative numbers are exactly the same. A negative times a negative is a positive. When the signs are different, like a negative and a positive, or positive and negative, you're going to end up with a negative result. And when the signs are the same, positive, positive, you end up with positive. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.